state of Kentucky uh, who is visiting this academic year as an institute for advanced study. And uh, Marjorie, uh, in addition to being a great algebraic commentarist, we should be particularly proud of her. Uh, she is a Rutgers undergrad alumnus from the class of 1986. So uh, Rutgers alumnus can go very, alumni can go very far, as you can see in this talk. So thank you for the, for the very... <laughs> well, and as usual, we're going to take uh, the speaker, in this case Margie, out for dinner uh, at 6.45 at the Evelyn restaurant. If you'd like to join us, you're all welcome, but let me know immediately after the talk. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to thank Duran and Andrew for the, um, for the invitation to come here. It's nice to be back in New Jersey and at Rutgers. So this is work with Richard Aaron work. And throughout my work, um, the basic problem that I've been, uh, one of the main uh, fields, areas I've been interested in is actually looking at polytopes and studying flag incidences in polytopes, so using geometry to motivate things. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today, but in a much more general setting. And we're going to see that that's going to have a very nice application. So let me actually start talking about something called the AB index. And so in order to do this, uh, let's actually start looking at um, I want to start looking at partially what it says. So we're going to assume that P is going to be a poset, which is graded. And I'm not assuming you know what a poset is and what is graded. And let's say rank in. So let's actually start looking at an example. So if we look at the Boolean algebra on three elements, what this is going to be is we're going to look at all subsets of the elements 1, 2, and 3, order them by inclusion. So on the bottom, we have the empty set. Then we have our singletons, one, two, and three. Then we have subsets of size two. And then, of course, the one subset of size three. So in general, there is a Boolean algebra on n elements. And this is a post set that is ranked. So meaning that if you look, ah, this chalk is squeaking. If you look at <coughs> the distance from an element to the bottom element, that this is a well-defined distance. So you say this is a ranked poset. So this is rank zero elements, rank one, rank two, rank three. So the fact that we have this nice grading, then we actually say we have a ranked poset. And if you don't like this example, and you say, what is this Boolean algebra? I don't really like this. This is the same thing as the intersection lattice of a triangle, like geometry I'll do, labeled, vertices labeled 1, 2, and 3. So each of these subsets corresponds to a face. So for example, 1, 3 corresponds to an edge on this triangle. So you know, whether you like geometry or not, you can do that. So what I want to do is I want to start encoding chains in this post set. So I have to start selecting different ranks from here. So, so the things that's going to be important is, are these active ranks, the ranks that fall between rank 0 and n in general. So over here it's rank 1 and 2. So we're going to take different subsets of ranks and count chains going from the bottom element, ending at the top, going through certain ranks. So for example, there's one chain that goes through none of the ranks, starts at the bottom, ends at the top one of these, and then just going through rank one, there are three chains. You have this one, this one, this one, so three. Going through just rank two, we have again three chains, this one, this one, this one. And then finally, in terms of max, whoops, maximal chains going through both ranks one and two, so this is a very regular post set, so this is pretty easy to do. So notice we have three choices for what we're going to choose for a rank one element, and then from a rank one element to a rank two element, we always have two choices. So it's going to be three times two, or six. So this is a baby example of, so this is called the flag F vector. So we're actually counting 
if you like to think about geometry, flags of faces. If you're looking at, for example, polytope, um, this, this is telling you, for example, uh, this is telling you how many vertex edge pairs there are in the polytope. Come in, come in, come in. So I want to massage this data a little bit. There's something called the flag H vector. So this is an alternating sum of the flag numbers, flag F numbers, so flag H vector. So let's start computing these. So if we look at H empty, it turns out to be the same as F empty. So that's one. We look at H1, this turns out to be F1 minus F empty, so three minus one or two. For H2, it's going to be F2 minus F empty, which is again is two. And then the exciting computation, H12, is going to be F12 minus F1 minus F2 plus F empty. We end up getting one. So notice now that it turns out this data is symmetric. Um, this happens, one of the reasons why it happens to be this way is because we're looking at a face less of a polytope. This has a property of something called shelling. It's shellable and we get the symmetry. But I just want you to realize that the nice thing here is that we've actually, by doing this, we've removed some redundancies that have occurred. So I want to, I want to encode this flag H information a little bit more. So I want to use a non-commutative monomial to do that. So I want to encode these subsets. So for example, the empty set, we did not take one, we did not take anything in rank two. So one and two are absent, so to, den to denote that, we have A in the first position and A in the second position. One is absent, two is absent. For to encode the uh, second system of one, one is in, so B is for B there, and A is for absent. Nobody laughs in this seminar. It's so sad. Oh, you yeah. laughed. Okay. Good. Uh, no. <laughs> for uh, subset consisting of two, A, B, and finally B, B. So this is just a non-commutative monomial. So again, I'm going to say A and B are non-commutative. This is very important for this talk. <clears throat> and so now I'm ready to define the A, B index. I'm oh, sorry, is A, a for absent? A is funny? for absent? Yeah. I, well, because then you say, well, what are you going to have B for? So oh, I get it now. Get it now. <laughs> so the A, B, and this is on film, that's the worst point. So the, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, I was warned, like, be careful, because I sometimes do funny things in the little talking. Okay, uh, the A, B index for a POSET is simply, we're going to use as coefficients these H values and on these monomials US. So for example, for the Boolean algebra, its AB index is going to be 1AA, 2BA, 2AB, plus 1BB. So that is the AB index. So is this OK? Because if you don't get this, I have lost you forever. So okay. No, I think it is. It might be. I think it's US. U.S. All it is is encoding a subset. So, for example, let's say if uh, whatever I had a subset one, uh, one, two, three, a subset of one to five, you encode that as B B B A A because one, two, and three are in. Four and five are absent. For your example, you just use a subset. Yeah, just okay. yeah, this is a baby example, because yeah, otherwise I would go berserk. I can't handle anything else larger. Oh, that's the only encoding a set by... It's just, the an, the it's one. just an encoding. It's just the other one to end with. Yeah, that's all it is. That's, it's, it's not meant to be yeah. anything high level, whatever. Okay, so now I want to introduce two more non-commutative variables. So let's introduce C, which is A plus B. So this is totally unmotivated, D, which is AB plus BA. So note that C has degree one, D has degree two. And let's see if we can rewrite this AB index in terms of these. So we try, and what do we get? Well, notice again, non-commutative. So if we take C and square it, that's the quantity A plus B squared. That makes a contribution of one to each of these monomials. So you peel off an AA, BA, AB, BB, and then what's left with is 
BA plus AB, and that's D. So the question